What is normal birth? Isn't it interesting how little we see or know about normal birth? And by normal, I am just saying spontaneous and physiological. When we see or hear accounts of births to perfectly healthy mothers and babies, we can regularly see that they are littered with induction, augmentation, artificial rupture of membranes, restricted movement, regular internal examinations, monitoring, restricted food, drink, and so on. So many things that are done now during a labour that have been normalised to the point of seeming utterly expected and conventional. How many of you, for example, have birth as an image in your mind of a woman lying on her back being told to push? You see, this is not how mammals birth, and, and clearly we are mammals. It's not to say that these things are not useful or that they don't have a place in a tricky birth or when either mum or baby are poorly, but instead we are talking normal here. So what is happening? Well, as you know, millions of sperm swam against all odds up a super highway of cervical fluid for just one to fertilise the patiently waiting egg. By week eight, you may not even have known that you were pregnant, but the development of your baby's brain, spinal cord and heart were underway and their facial features were beginning to form. The umbilical cord connected your baby to your body. As your baby grew and developed, they may have had their eyes still closed, but they could hear your voice and all the wonderful internal sounds of your body. Then any time between 18 to 21-ish weeks, you may have started to feel your baby moving, a fluttering at first, but getting stronger with each week. By your third trimester, your little one would have begun to open her eyes, blink and practice breathing. At this point, you may have noticed that she was awake and asleep at certain times of the day and night. And as you now move toward these final weeks of carrying your little one, your body is full of hormones. Prostaglandin, which will help open the cervix and make your body more receptive to the hormone oxytocin. Relaxin, helping your muscles and ligaments soften and stretch to allow your baby to move through your pelvis into birth. Then oxytocin for your surges, breast milk and birthing your placenta, as well as beta endorphins for pain relief, joy, encouragement and bonding. And a sprinkling of adrenaline for energy and focus when things are moving toward the actual birth. Your uterus, the biggest bag of muscles in your body, will pull up toward the fundus. It does this by using the longitudinal muscles which run from bottom to top. These pulling up then cause the circular muscle fibres to release and slide up the sides. Thus dilation, the space through which your baby will descend, expands, creating enough space for first your baby to be born and then your placenta. Now to dynamic movement. Your pelvis, which is three separate bones, moves as the baby travels into the vagina. And baby helps too by overlapping the five separate plates across their head, thus moulding to a shape more appropriate for birth. Your perineum stretches, your baby is born. This entire process can take place on its own, without prompts, without being told what to do. It is a brilliant, effective, and pretty perfect system. It's normal birth. Again, I will reiterate, if either a mum or a baby are poorly, then there are plenty of protocols in place to help that birth along. But on the whole, normal birth just happens without help. You could say that it flows in spite of all we do to stop it in its tracks.